Please rise and join together in the opening litany. When God speaks, God acts. God's speaking is bound to God's being. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Jesus is the word of God present for us. If we are faithless, he will. He cannot deny himself. Jesus is the word of God present for us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Jesus is the fulfillment of God's promise and the assurance that God will keep every promise he has made. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Jesus is the proof that God will do what he has said. Jesus is the comfort and encouragement that we will share in the completion of all God's wonderful plans. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. We continue with the order of confession and forgiveness. Talk is cheap. There is an enormous gulf between a word said and a deed done. We know too well the pain of broken promises and the hurt caused by empty assurances. People have failed us, but we know that we also struggle to keep our word. We have caused and continue to cause our own hurt and pain. We have failed others. We have failed God. Lord God, I have not been faithful. I have made promises that I could not keep. I have spoken a word of agreement and then forgotten to uphold it. I have given assurances and then failed to follow through. I have committed and then changed my mind when it became difficult. Forgive me for my empty words. Forgive me for my broken promises. Forgive me for being faithless. When we are faithless, he remains faithful. God has promised always to forgive the repentant sinner. There is no doubt then. God knows your failure and your sin, and he forgives you for all of it. Take heart. Your failures have all been forgiven. God has promised it, and he always keeps every promise. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Looking around, I don't see anybody I have to pinch today. Oh, maybe Deanna. Ah, oh, green. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you all. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty and faithful God, your dedication to us is beyond compare. When we celebrate, you are there. When we struggle, you are there. Guide us by your example to hold fast to our faith in Christ, living with integrity and grace as we find hope in you now and always. We pray all this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning. The first reading today comes from the second book of Timothy, chapter 2. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain salvation, <clears throat> excuse me, that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy, for if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny, he will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things, and charge them before God, 
not to quarrel about words, which does no good, but only ruins the hearers. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came up to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you mean. And when he went out to the entrance, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly, you too are one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the saying of Jesus, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Here ends the Holy Gospel. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you ever struggle with insomnia and you go to the TV and you turn it on, it's likely that you'll be able to find an infomercial. One of those products that you find and see and, you know what, at 2 o'clock in the morning seemed like an ingenious idea. And you know what makes it even more enticing to give a call and to order five of them? Is that they all come with the satisfaction guaranteed money back guarantee. Yeah, yeah, if you're not satisfied, send it back and they will refund you your entire purchase price. Sounds like a great, great thing, right? Have you ever tried, though, to file and get your money back saying you weren't satisfied? All of a sudden, you recognize that that satisfaction guarantee has a lot of small print underneath it. Yeah, it comes with a lot of different things because you know what? That word guarantee comes cheap, right? It comes cheap. Because words too often come cheap. Peter's an example of that. Peter, in his following of Jesus, calls out to Jesus from the boat as Jesus is walking on the water and says, Oh, Jesus, if only you would call me to come out to you, I would come. And Jesus snickers and says, Okay, come. And all of a sudden, Peter recognizes that words come really cheap because there's a big difference between saying, I'll go out and walk on water, and actually going out and doing it. Yeah, we fall into that same trap, don't we? Words come cheap. That's why this, you know what, in a few days, you've got that NCAA basketball tournament. And I bet you if I asked any one of you, you'd be like, oh, this is the team that's going to win it all. This is the team that's going to hold the trophy at the end. And then my response to you would be like, oh, yeah, you want to put some money down on it? And all of a sudden, you're not quite so sure. Yeah, putting your money where your mouth is, walking the walk, not just talking the talk, is something that we all struggle with a little bit. Because it's easy to say something harder to do it because words, words, they come cheap. Peter didn't learn this lesson after his first experience of 
failing to walk on water. In our Gospel lesson today, we see Peter again putting his foot in his mouth. See Jesus sharing, foretelling how he would be denied by his closest followers. And Peter says, no, I will never deny you, not even to my death. And what happens just a little bit later? Sure enough, those words come back to bite Peter as he denies Jesus in order to save himself. A broken promise. Words that come cheap that are backed up by little or no action. Unfortunately, Peter, they claim in the scriptures, actually does a lot to highlight our own humanity. Because we can identify with Peter because he has certain faults, and one of them is that fault of having words that are spoken that are not necessarily backed up with action. Words can come cheap, and sometimes we don't live up to them. You ever told somebody that you'll pray for them only to then forget about it? Ever said, oh, I would help you, but... You ever made a promise to someone only to then either forget about it or or break it? All of those apply to me. That's why that order of confession and forgiveness is so powerful. Yeah, words come cheap. And we all express words that sometimes we fail to back up in action. And we're left there, just like Peter. Peter, who denied Jesus. Peter, who who did not live faithfully into the words that he spoke. Who did not walk the walk, but did talk the talk. But that's why it's a really good thing that our God is God. Because while we are not always faithful in our words, our words and our commitments and promises to one another, and our promise to God, that promise to live as God's people, to love one another, to rest in the identity that Christ has given. We fail to live into those words, but God never fails to live into God's faithfulness through us. God comes to us with a message, a word that says, I love you, and that word is backed up by the walk that God takes especially the walk that God takes carrying a cross to the top of the hill. Walk that God takes being mounted to that cross. And then the walk that God takes out of that tomb on Easter Sunday. Yes, God walks the walk of faithfulness along with talking the talk. Because with God, with God, words do not come cheap. They're always backed up with action. They're always backed up with intensity. They're always backed up with a satisfaction guarantee. (laughs) So, as we remember and recall the ways that we fall short and how our words are cheapened by not following through with our action, may we be like Peter, who was not defined by his stumbles. But instead, may we be like Peter, who was defined by God's faithfulness in God's word of love. May we know that love. May that love inspire us and uplift us now and always. May we be encouraged to claim our identity as God's beloved child created in God's image, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and in need of God's grace. Yes, may we, may we be defined now and always by God's gracious act through Jesus Christ. Because God's word, God's word is most certainly not cheap. Amen.
Please rise and join together in the prayers. Each petition in our prayers today ends with the words, Christ who heals all brokenness, to which the response is, restore our broken promises in, to you. Lord God, you once promised Noah never destroy, to destroy the earth again with a flood. According to your word, you have kept that promise and preserved your creation. Christ who heals all brokenness, restore our broken promises to you. Lord God, you promised Abraham that you would make of him a great nation. You wonderfully filled that promise in your people Israel. And now in the new Israel of your people, the church, Christ who heals all brokenness, restore our broken promises to you. Lord God, when your people were oppressed and enslaved, you promised to deliver them. Through Moses, you kept your word and led your people into the Holy Land. Christ who heals all brokenness, restore our broken promises to you. Lord God, you promised David that from him you would establish an eternal destiny that would not be broken. In David's greater son, that promise has been completed and multiplied. Christ who heals all brokenness, restore our broken promises to you. Lord God, when your people faltered and proved faithless, you promised to bring them out of exile again. Through your chosen servant, Cyprus, you perfectly accomplished that promise and brought your people home. Christ, who heals all brokenness, restore our broken promises to you. Lord God, again and again, you promised to deliver your people, and you did. You promised to send the deliverer, and you did. You sent Jesus Christ, who heals all brokenness, broken promises to you. Lord God, you promised to bring forgiveness and new life. You promised to defeat death. You promised to crush Satan. You promised to restore your creation. You promised to bring your kingdom. In Jesus, you have kept every promise. Jesus is your yes to every promise. Christ, who heals all brokenness, restore our broken promises to you. Lord God, work again to complete your promise and to bring to fulfillment your plan for restoration. Strengthen us to move away from sin. Bring an end to suffering. Banish disease. Destroy death. Bring your eternal kingdom. Send your Son again. Christ who heals all brokenness, restore our broken promises to you. Lord God, while we wait, make us faithful. Sustain and strengthen us for the task you give us. We pray this in the name of your yes. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now is the time where we would normally pass our offering plate. Instead, we place it in the back near the door as you exit today. We also give thanks for the many generous expressions of faith that you have shown over the past few months and year even. And we invite you to be part of one of our big mission projects, the Easter Blessing Bags. The bags are located by the door. Feel free to take one, fill it up with the items described, and bring it back here, and we'll make sure that it gets to the food pantry so that they may help others to celebrate with full tummies the celebration of the resurrection. As we prepare to depart today, I also invite you to, to remain in your pew so I can come by and say hello to each of you before we depart. Now, Jesus is the fulfillment of every one of God's promises. Jesus is God's absolute yes to you. Abide in the assurance of God's word. Stay strong in the certainty that he will do all that he says. Go forward with peace confident in his promise to you. Amen.